Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we will look into central limit theorem, a fairly easy but uh, very powerful concept. So we will look at what central limit theorem is and how we can use it in practical example. So we will see practical example as well and uh, then we will also try to demonstrate it using Python programming language. So that is what we will discuss in this video. So let's start off with the definition of central limit theorem. So central limit theorem states that the distribution of sample means approximates a normal distribution as the sample size gets larger regardless of the population's distribution. So what does this exactly mean? Let's try to understand using a diagram. So let's say we have this population and uh, we derive several samples out of it. And then we find mean of each sample. And now if we try to plot these means, it should be normally distributed. So that's what central limit theorem says. And the mean of uh, this normal distribution will be same as population's mean and standard deviation of sample will be equal to standard deviation of population divided by root of sample size or if you want to talk in terms of variance it will be variance of population divided by n and n is sample size so let's say here our population had 10,000 data points and uh, we extracted n equal to 50 n equal to 50 same for all these and as a rule of thumb it is suggested that you should always take n equal to or greater than 30 now let's try to take a practical example and try to understand how useful central limit theorem is so let's consider this scenario where you work as a data analyst in an agricultural firm and your manager wants to know how they can maximize the profits by selling sugarcane. So you are a data analyst, you are more of a technical person and you don't know how exactly the business works. So you ask several questions and when you will actually work as a data analyst or data scientist and when you will work with the domain experts, you will always ask these kind of questions. So by asking the various questions, you were able to extract these key information. So the informations are they sell sugarcane in uh, volumes, so they make X amount of money per ton of sugarcane. They also have a limit on how much sugarcane they can store and also they pay harvesting company to harvest sugarcane. So they need to make sure they harvest at the right time. So these are the key constraints, key information that you were able to find. So to do this, you can do it in two different ways. So the method one can be you go to the field, there are thousands of sugarcane, you measure each and every sugarcane and uh, you take their measurement and uh, you tell them that, okay, I found out that three to four meters seems like a good point where we can start harvesting. So whenever the sugarcane reaches a height of three to four meter, we can start harvesting. So this is one way. But the problem is it is very time consuming. It is not a feasible option. So the next method can be using central limit theorem. So what you will do is again, you have thousands of uh, sugarcane. Now you will randomly start selecting smaller samples. And uh, this could be your sample size of 50. And uh, from that you will have sample one, sample two, sample three and sample four. This will have mean as mu one, mu two, mu three, mu four. And uh, from central limit theorem, you know that when you plot these means, you will get normal distribution. And the mean of your sample mean distribution will be same as population mean. So you know now the population's mean. And uh, also your standard deviation will be equal to population standard deviation divided by this. So if you know this, you can, and obviously you know this, 
so you can find population standard deviation as well and uh, maybe or may not be your uh, population will have normal distribution but we know that sample mean distribution will always be normally distributed so now from this we can also use our 68 95 99 rule so let me draw these here so this is our mean this will be our first standard deviation this will be second standard deviation this will be third this will be minus one minus two and minus three so let's assume that our mean is four so this will be five six seven and this will be three two one so we know that in this range we will have 68 percent of our data points or field and in this we will have 95 percent of our sugarcane and in this range we will have 99.7 so from this we can say that if we harvest when we get mean of 3 meters we will have 84 percent of our crop which can yield us good profit so this is what we can tell from normal distribution and uh, central limit theorem now let me show you a website where you can actually change the sample size and uh, distribution of your population and uh, you can actually see how the distribution of your sample mean changes so here if you go to online statbook.com slash stat underscore sim slash sampling underscore dist so if you go to this link I will leave the link into the description so let me first make some random distribution so this is the random distribution and uh, I want to create uh, 25 n is equal to 25 and uh, I will create thousand or uh, 10,000 data points and uh, 10,000 samples actually and uh, then I have taken mean of them and then this is the distribution of it so you can see it is very uh, normally distributed and also the mean of our random distribution is 16.29 and uh, here also we can see that it is 16.23 which is very close and standard deviation was 9.45 and here it is 1.90 so if you divide 9.45 by square root of 25 so that will be somewhere close to 2 now let me take you to the notebook and show you there how you can do that if you want to do it in python so again we are using pi dataset package and from that we are using boston dataset and we have seen in the previous videos the distribution of age which is quite skewed and it is not normally distributed and you can see these skewness and kurtosis values here now what i'm doing is i'm taking a sample size of 30 and i am running it for thousand times and i'm taking the mean of it and appending it and now i'm trying to plot the distribution of uh, the means and you can see here it is very much normally distributed and if I, if you also try to see skewness and kurtosis they are very close to zero we can also see the mean of population and also sample means is very close to each other and uh, now here i'm using variance so variance is calculated using np dot where and uh, i have divided by n because that's the relationship which we saw in the slides where sample variance is equal to population variance divided by n and you can see they are also quite close to each other so this is how you can do as for your task what i would suggest you is try to change the sample size and also number of times you are running it and uh, see how it is changing so try to take very small n values somewhere around 5 and 10 and see how it is affecting the shape of uh, your sample means and then take some higher values like 100 and 200 total of uh, 500 data points we have so you can actually go all the way up to 500 so that's what you can do uh, but uh, yeah try to play around that and uh, see how things are changing and that way you will be able to understand the effect of uh, number of iterations and uh, sample size in uh, central limit theorem so yeah this is what the central limit theorem is i hope you were able to understand it in a much better way now and uh, hope to see you in the next video happy learning